Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We're a nonprofit that uses radio control to get kids excited about math and science. We've got some race tech ultra slick grease. It's a one ounce container. It goes uh, by the part number USSG01. Now we were recommended this uh, ultra slick grease as part of rebuilding our shocks, right? Um, the uh, Use case here is uh, basically a grease for the O-rings on the shocks. Now, um, other available alternatives are uh, a lot of people use team-associated green slime. Um, also, um, I think uh, what is it? I you know through some research, I had found out that um, green slime is actually repackaged. Um, motorcycle grease. Um, folks have said that uh, it's the same as Nolene. That's N O L E E N S F three motorcycle grease. So, um, regardless, uh, you know, we weren't able to find Nolene local to us. Uh, the the S F three. We were able to get a local motorcycle shop to order the the Race Tech Ultra Slick grease for us. Um, they had a special order it and, you know, we had to call around a little bit, but um, it ended up being $7 for that one ounce jar, um, probably more than enough to cover a, a, a lifetime of uh, shock rebuilds for us over here at Racing to Learn. But regardless, um, you can see that I, I, I took a small amount of, uh, I'm just using a toothpick here uh, to work in a small amount of that um, that race tech ultra slick grease uh, and this is usually used for the, the rebuilding of of uh real motorcycle front forks right the suspension on those um real motorcycle you know dirt bikes front forks on there and uh you know when i was chatting with the the guys at the uh motorcycle shop there they said that uh you know the grease uh, you know, other folks will just use something like a Bell Ray waterproof grease uh, to rebuild those shocks. Um, but the real, uh, you know, the real function of this uh, this grease, right, for the uh, the O rings is to uh, a you know provide some lubrication there on the on the the uh, the shock of the shaft and the O ring, right? Uh, kind of a uh, ease the uh, the wear and tear there on those o-rings um, you know you could also just use silicon uh, shock oil right or your, your uh, usual shock fluid there um, but uh, we decided to give this uh, you know this um, race tech ultra slick grease a shot here um, probably an even better test would be to use it on the notoriously leaky ECX um, two-wheel drive plastic shocks. We're, we're using it here on the uh, upgraded ECX aluminum shocks. Um, so, uh, you know, just just putting in the, the O-rings back in here after, you know, dumping out the, the shock fluid, after cleaning everything up. Um, again, you just, you know, you, you just want to have as, as, as clean of a of an environment as possible and, you know, putting some some of that um, uh, that race tech ultra slick grease on the the shock of the shaft there too. Before I, uh, you know, before I put that shock shaft into uh, the shock body I, again. The purpose here is um, you know re reducing the the wear and tear on on those O rings. Now, as you guys have probably seen in a previous episode, when we took apart some of our Traxxas shocks. Uh, the the X rings or the grooved O rings, uh, let's see, that's the the more technical name for those there. But um, those were, uh, you know, we the the bulk of them were torn, right? There there were little nicks, little tears, um, in that O ring, and you know these were used vehicles that we hadn't bought new, so I'm not sure if um, the tearing uh, occurred because of. Um, you know, just because of how the, the, the shocks were originally assembled or, um, you know, if it was just normal wear and tear. 
Uh, but anyways, you know, whenever you, you uh, see a, a torn or a worn out bearing, you want to replace that or else you're going to have leaky shocks. And those leaky shocks will manifest themselves um, through, uh, you, you know, you'll, you'll actually see fluid or more often than not, if you're running uh, off road, you're going to see a bunch of dust and dirt um, clumped onto the, um, the shock body. Uh, and uh, just around the uh, the uh, lower spring mount and whatnot, it's it's you're just gonna have a a bunch of uh, mess on your hands, a lot of gunk, oil, uh, that shock oil, that grime that it picks up. So um, you could see, uh, you know, we we've got a a shock that we re rebuilt already. Um, the one that we have in process here, uh, our shock, our homemade shock holder there uh, just some some cardboard tubing that we taped together with some uh, electrical tape there you know we cut it to length taped it together uh here um we're uh, we're taking the um the shock cap or um you know some might call this one a bladder because uh it, it actually allows some air behind uh on the other side Right, to, to help in the uh, the bouncing back of that um, or the rebound is the more technical term of that shock so here we're placing the shock into our homemade shock holder here uh, just making sure that the um, the, the uh, you know uh, actually popping off the cap of the shock here um, if you're going to use pliers on these metal body shocks, make sure you have some, uh, you know, some masking tape or some sort of tape on there just to, just to prevent any marring on the, the body of that shock. You will also want to clean out any sort of gunk on the inside of that shock after you've dumped the, the shock fluid out. All right, and just making sure that retainer, uh, the bottom part of the shock body there that threads in, just making sure that it's finger tight. You don't wanna crank it down. Oh, really, we're putting um, rubber bump stop too so that the, the shock doesn't bottom out into the, the uh, shock rod end there that we're threading on right now. So just putting the shock fluid into the shocks here. Really important to work the, the piston up and down. You want to release any, any air bubbles. All right, so usually you want to ha fill up the shock yeah, about halfway, get any air bubbles off, and then go ahead and top it off. You, you may have noticed that I was using a, a different bottle before. We had used that bottle to siphon out uh, clean shock fluid. 
because we wanted to put that race tech ultra slick grease onto the bearings there so we had to drain out the clean fluid and then put it back in so Always handy to have some paper towels on hand when you're doing the, the rebuilding of the shocks here. siphon out a little bit of that fluid and I think we've got a little bit too much in there because of that extra volume that the uh, the rubber cap right that conical rubber cap or that that shock bladder takes up An interesting thing to note here is that the stock plastic ECX shocks use an O-ring, right? So it's just literally just an O-ring on the shock cap, whereas the upgraded aluminum shocks use a, a conical cap or a bladder, right? So we've got more suspension travel on there now and you'll notice that uh, any sort of excess fluid on these upgraded ECX shocks will um, th there's a little bit of a channel there that it will um, you know any excess will uh, squirt out of right or I shouldn't say squirt just bleed out of All right so just tightening up the cap Just kind of comparing it with the travel of uh, an existing shock that we had rebuilt already. Checking the rebound there. Next, on to our next shock here. Again, just filling that body. About halfway there, getting the bubbles out. You don't want any air bubbles in there or else those air bubbles will compress. Whereas fluids are not compressible, gases are, right? So that any air bubbles will compress, leading to inconsistent, um, you know, inconsistent uh, properties of the shock there. So make sure to get any of those air bubbles out. You can do that by, again, cycling the, um, the, um, the shock piston there up and down to release any air bubbles caught under it. And then also just letting them sit for a little bit in uh, a shock holder, right? You don't have to buy one. You can make one like we have um, some RC pit stands or whatnot. RC stands come with those built in as well. Well, thanks again for watching. Let us know what you guys thought of this video in the comments below. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.